Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 29th. First up, this one I just got this morning too. Uh, I noticed it getting up. This is from Slashdot, and there's also a link to the Wall Street Journal, which I want to say first about links and the way they're going to be in the future. More and more, like the Wall Street Journal, when you click on a link, they're going to ask you to subscribe. Now, this time I clicked on the link for this article, and it showed the full article, but more and more, even on the science sites, as I give links to articles, you'll click on it and they'll ask you to sign up or um, give your email address or something like that. I have no control over that, so it's something I'll try to find a workaround or we're just going to have to deal with. So that's the best I can do about that. But this is about prepare to hang up the phone forever. According to this article, only about 8.5% of the population still rely on a they call it a pot service, plain old telephone service, your copper twisted pairs. Only 8.5% of people still rely on that as their only form of communication. So, <coughs> excuse me, 30 other states have passed or are considering laws that restrict state government oversight and eliminated carrier of last resort mandates. In other words, no more required that everybody within a certain geographical area has to have phone service. And they also talked about the fact that some of the latest storms have wiped out entire cities and their infrastructure as far as telephone systems and things like that. So Verizon was talking about in one community, instead of spending millions of dollars and re-running all the lines and stuff like that, just setting up a wireless system to where it would give enough coverage to, to cover the whole area this was in. Let me see if I can even pronounce it right. It's in New Jersey. It's Mantalucking, Mantalucking, New Jersey. Verizon wants to replace the landline system, which Hurricane Sandy wiped out with its wireless voice link. So... I think as long as they take care of, uh, as long as they don't totally eliminate the legislation so that people in rural areas that did have phone service in the past still have some method of communicating, yeah, I think once it reaches below a 10% level, maybe it's time to start phasing out the very old telephone type of service. So anyway, if you get a chance, to check that out. And I hope, like for me, I hope the Wall Street Journal link will work for you. And this one I actually uh, talked about on Facebook a little bit. This uh, was March, a March 20th article. The Illinois Supreme Court unanimously overturns the, the country's strictest recording ban. Illinois was the last of the states to still, and I bas they basically, it's been ruled for about the last two years in various courts that police officers were allowed to be filmed in public. And for some reason, Illinois just does not want to get with it, and especially certain police departments. They threaten people with arrest. They arrest people for filming, and especially us being moto vloggers or people that film in public anyway. I mean, the threat's always there that they're going to arrest you, and constantly it just gets plea bargained down to, to uh, miss, uh, what do they call it, disorderly conduct or whatever, and thrown out anyway. So it's basically a waste of time, but it's just it's annoying to... Um, have Illinois be the last state that still will not recognize your constitutional freedom to film in public. I mean, it's uh, it's about as common sense as they get. I mean, you can't have privacy if you're walking around outside and if you're a public official, if you're a government official, if you're paid by us to do your job. Um, filming should be something you would actually approve of or like. If you're doing your job correctly, it should uh, show you in a good light. So um, why not? And it's... Uh, it's about time if you get a chance. This is from Reason.com. And as usual, all links will be posted down below in the um, description box. This next one was sent in by 1954 Shadow. And I have done this artist before. I did him once before a few years ago on the TDD report. His name is Michael Paul Smith. And I'll put up a few of the photos here that he did. And the interesting thing is the way he does them with the perspective. He does these as uh, miniature sets, and if you can see in the one drawing here, there's a comparison of two of them. This is the one view of uh, the set, the way it looks when he photographed it, and then here's a far-off view to show you how he does this with perspective. So using the right type of setups and uh, his little um, miniature sets, which I'm fascinated actually. This one doesn't show it so much, but in the past one that I showed, um, they actually show the interiors of some of these, and he puts just about as much effort into the interior designs of these little sets as he does to the outside and taking the final photograph. I mean, I would think one of those little buildings must take weeks and weeks and weeks to do, if not months, but uh, it's really great the way he takes the time to put the detail in it and make these photographs look just so realistic. It, it is really great. And last up, uh, we had a post that people didn't really understand the way we posted it on. Uh, actually, my friend Harley in Taiwan, Tamas, posted about um, 
a thing called Duolingo, where it's a free language course. And it's more than just a free language course, and it's technically not even free. I mean, they offer it to you for free, but the thing about it is you're actually earning, you're actually paying for it in a certain way because as you get better with the language, they put your skills to another use that actually helps out on the Internet. And rather than give all the details myself, I'm just going to flip it over to my interview with Harley and Taiwan Tamas and let him explain it. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry so, I confused it. So what are you explaining it correctly? Would be, is really for uh, uh, digitizing books. That's right, yeah. Because the human, you know, when you are a human and you look at something, you can actually read those and the uh, speech recognition, I mean like, you know, text recognition software couldn't recognize a lot of words from old faded books when they scan them. Okay. So people can do that. Um, and then Duolingo is basically, they realize that, um, you know, they, if they want to translate a lot of books, uh, they want to translate them a web, that was the idea. Mm -hmm. um, if they use some software to do that, the softwares are very large, and they, they, they give you some very idiotic uh, results, uh, they are still in baby, you know, in baby state. Yeah, in other words, if I tried to communicate with you in Hungarian and I was using Google Translate, you could tell very easily that I did not know the language. In fact, probably some of our conversations would sound rather silly, right? Oh, that's for sure. I mean, you would tell me some things, probably you would send me to my mother. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, he realized that uh, professionals could do it, but it would be very, very costly. Mm -hmm. He calculated that translating... Um, just Wikipedia uh, to, to Spanish, or, the, or at least the 80% that is not in Spanish yet, into Spanish, that would cost about 50 million US dollars, which Oof. is quite a bit of money. Yeah. And if, you know, with the, this uh, Duolingo, what he's doing is basically, he is getting the people, you know, he's basically having a free uh, language learning experience, while you are translating a lot of things, mm -hmm. and while you are translating, actually you learn from it. Okay. You know, like he gives you a sentence, every single sen every single word itself has a translation on that, so you can check the translation out. Okay. But uh, you basically have to translate the sentence, and it's most of the time it's better than any kind of machine would do. And while you're doing that, you actually learn the language. Yeah. Uh, at least that was the original idea that this would be 100% based on like that. Mm -hmm. And in this case, they would use it like for translating real-time material. And they calculated that the this Wikipedia translation would take about five weeks with 100,000 people mm -hmm. and about 80 hours with a million people. Okay. Now, it was the, the, the first presentation that he gave this idea and it just came out was like three, four years ago. And now what they do is a little bit different. They actually, um, first they give you some teach, you know, they first they just teach you basics for free. Yeah, that's the other thing that, that people need to know. This is all for free. It's not like Rosetta Stone or one of the other ones where you pay money. It's an absolute free. You pick the language and if they have it available to teach, it costs you nothing. And before we finish, before we finish the video too, I want to give uh, my friend Tamas a chance to promote his YouTube page and his Facebook page too. So be sure and join them. What, what, how do they want to get a hold of you at YouTube? Well, in YouTube you can search for Harley in Taiwan. Harley in Taiwan. Yeah, it's Harley in Taiwan. All three are capitalized. But, uh, okay. And in Facebook, um, how do they find you on Facebook? Well, just uh, use my name. Thomas, okay. -E okay. You can find me. Okay. And I will also put links below as usual if you're seeing this on the TDD report. Just look down below in the links below too and there will be links to the um, Duolingo and there will also be links to um, Tamas's channels. Thank you very much, sir. I, it was fun talking to you as always. I appreciate it. That's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.